Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Shanka Show – Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи, в эфире программа Ушанка Шоу. In today's video we're gonna talk about bread in the Soviet Union. If you follow my channel, you already should know that I made quite a few videos on the topic of groceries in the Soviet Union as well as bread. But there were quite a few questions on this topic, so today we're gonna try to answer one of your most uh, popular questions. So let's see. Ghost of Ronald Reagan said, your English isn't half bad. Okay, never mind. That's the wrong comment. But I replied, probably be better than your Russian. Okay, here we go. Did Russians bake their own bread? That's pretty much the questions we're going to talk about today. And here's a similar question from the different video about how we survived after the collapse of the Soviet Union. You measured your grandma's pension in bread. Was it possible to make your own bread? Get ingredients and do it yourself. That was how my mom saved a lot of money to feed our family. And another similar question, was it easier and cheaper to make your own bread? Or was that not an option for most people? Or was it more that most people simply didn't do because it was easier? So anyway, so we're going to talk about baking bread in the USSR. But let's start with the short lesson of Russian language. Urok ruskova yazyka. In Russian we say хлеб. Хлеб. That's bread in Russian language. Хлеб. And in Ukrainian we say хлеб. Хлеб. Okay, now let's talk about making bread in the Soviet Union. I must tell you guys that this questions about making your own bread caught me kind of off guard because I should ask that question myself since I spent so many probably days if not months of my life waiting in line to buy bread, although I never had to wait in Kyiv once in a great while but when i spent summers out in the village with my grandparents that was my job to walk it's about like two miles to the grocery store and wait in line to purchase bread and bread was delivered three times a week uh, to that village so the villagers will gather a couple hours before the bread truck will arrive to make sure they have enough bread and usually we had a limit how many loaves of bread could you purchase that bread what i told you is called buchanka it looks like a brick there was a limit depends how much bread was delivered they could tell you okay you can have one loaf per person in your household or you can have only one loaf per household because not enough bread was delivered and i never even bothered to ask my mom or my grandmother why don't we just make our own bread why do i need to wait for hours in line to buy bread at the grocery store it was just kind of like this is what we do and I don't remember my parents or my grandparents ever baking, making bread except for one holiday. Only before Easter, my mom would bake this, we call it in Ukraine, Pascha. So that's Easter bread. So it's a sweet bread. It might have raisins in it. And then we have, you know, this topping, white, sweet topping. And then you got some sprinkles. So that was the only way I remember when my mom was actually making bread. So why didn't Soviets make their own bread? I believe the main reason is because government heavily subsidized bread. It made it quite cheap or affordable. For example, this loaf of bread, what I call Buhanka, and it's, I believe, was 500 grams. The cost was 16 kopecks. Now, the price of flour was 46 kopecks a kilo, or 23 kopecks for 500 grams. So, Look at this difference. You can buy 500 grams of bread ready to go for 16 kopecks or just to buy flour to make bread. It will cost you 23 kopecks for the same 500 grams. And then of course you need more ingredients and then you need to make it. So first of all, if you have flour available in the store to purchase, so that's step number one. And I don't recall flour for sale often out in the village. In Kiev, we didn't have a shortage of that. Then water, sure, it's free. But you also need something else to make bread besides flour and water. You also need yeast. You need drozhi, as we say in Russian. And those were usually sold not like in dry form. I remember them sell, sold in a packet. So there's like a small brick. It's a live culture. And that's what you add to your mixture of flour and water to make a tiesta, <laughs> I forgot the word in English, to rise and then you can make bread out of it. Okay, I actually had to look it up. So dough, yeast, I had a brain fart. 
in order for that thing to rise, you need to add east, right? And that's what we had shortage of. And I cannot confirm or deny allegations, but I believe <laughs> that moonshining was one of the reasons why we had shortage of drozhi, of east. So, first of all, you need to get some flour. Then you need to find somewhere drozhi, and that will be the main challenge. And that stuff wasn't cheap. So, as you see, bread was so cheap in the Soviet Union. So, if you just have ingredients all added up, you probably will be double the cost of making bread yourself. Of course, it maybe it'd be better and fresher, but with all the effort to get items and then baking it, it was way more reasonable just to wait in line for an hour and buy bakery-made bread. And just for the comparison, if you take modern day prices in America, like flour, the local supermarket, it's about $1.10 per kilogram. And if you buy a kilogram of baked bread, like, you know, they call it artesian good bread, it's about $8 per kilogram. So as you see, there's a huge difference between bread flour and bread. While in the Soviet Union, flour was actually more expensive than bread made out of that flour. And I want to give you another price comparison, which I found quite fascinating. So we're going to compare bread and butter, right? So it sounds like it goes together, bread and butter. So once again, I ran some numbers and United States right now, butter is about $11 per kilogram and a good so-called artesian bread is about $7 per kilogram. So $11 for butter versus $7 for bread. So butter is about 1.6 times more expensive than bread. Okay, that's United States. Now, if we do the same comparison for the Soviet Union prices, our butter masla was 3 rubles 50 kopecks per kilogram and our bread 1 kilogram was 32 kopecks. So now Soviet butter was 11 times more expensive than bread, which means they didn't subsidize the butter, they subsidized bread. So in the United States the difference is 1.6 times seven dollars for bread versus eleven dollars for butter while in the soviet union it's 11 times difference 32 cents kopecks per bread versus 350 for butter huge difference so definitely bread was dirt cheap while butter was quite expensive so once again due to the heavy subsidies of the government it just didn't make sense for soviet people to waste their time, energy, and money to make their own bread. It was way cheaper to get in line and purchase bread at the grocery store. And of course, surprise, surprise, because bread was so dirt cheap, there was a lot of abuse. And I mean abuse is like people would buy bread to feed their pigs, chickens. It was just used to them as the, we call it kambikorm, like right, animal feed. And that was a, another struggle of the Soviet government is to kind of limit sales of bread otherwise people will buy them by giant bags to feed their pigs of course it wasn't such a big problem in the cities because people didn't have animals while you live in the city but there'll be villagers coming to the city you know and stopping hitting one grocery store after another and purchasing whatever they could be allowed to buy bread wise and then load up and take it down to the village and feed their cows and pigs and chickens. And that was one of the biggest challenges of the Soviet government is to provide enough bread for people. You make it so cheap, so now there's a huge volumes of bread being consumed because some people substituted instead of, you know, more expensive meat or other stuff. And of course, animal feed. So I remember every fall on our news program, Vremia Time, which was on every channel at 9 p.m., they'll talk about Bitva za Urajai. So it's literally like a battle for the harvest. We didn't harvest bread. We battled <laughs> with bread to harvest it, to harvest the grain. And I found this interesting diagram. So this is how much grain Soviet Union was importing. And the green line is the world prices for grain between 1950 and 1991. So as you see, sometimes around 1963, that's when the Soviet Union started purchasing grain in quite a large amounts. It's in millions of tons. And since 1972, the purchases pretty much skyrocketed. So as Soviet agriculture was collapsing, more and more grain was uh, purchased from United States, from Canada, from Australia, from Argentina. 
So millions of dollars were spent to purchase millions of tons of bread, then to subsidize that bread to sell their Soviet people. So that was just a, you know, like a death spiral for the Soviet economy, Soviet budget and Soviet agriculture. And I find it quite bizarre that, you know, you have a cold war, you have these nuclear weapons pointed at each other. And meanwhile, capitalists are feeding socialist country with bread to keep them going. <laughs> Although they could literally starve the whole Soviet Union by just cutting down the grain supplies. And I want to mention uh, Nikita Khrushchev's final push to feed the country. Remember, he had a disaster experience with corn, but he also had a disaster experience with wheat. And that's occurred between 1953 and 1965. Well, Khrushchev was replaced by Brezhnev in 1964. But it, right at the end of 1960s, that's what this wheat project failed and that's when the Soviet Union started buying huge amounts of grain from overseas. So in 1953 Nikita Khrushchev came up with the idea or probably someone suggested him the idea that they can develop new lands and start harvesting you know planting and harvesting wheat. Similarly what was done out in the west in the United States and they call it Padnyatya Tselini so like um, developing virgin lands and those were kind of like a dry lands you know, it was iffy. If the weather was fine, you can get good crops. If weather is not fine, then you're in trouble. So they spent a huge amount of money. There was a huge campaign advertising for young people to go there and help, you know, to plow <laughs> the fields, developing a new collective farms and plant, plant, plant and harvest wheat. It was a huge deal. It was big thing going on. There were posters and art and everything. And initially, everything looked great. By the end of 1950s, from one third to half of the old grain crops in the Soviet Union came from these new virgin lands. So, you know, they were virgin. So there was a good energy in those uh, soil. And then without fertilizer, crops started going down rapidly. And then guess what? Just like out west, they started having problems with dust, with soil being raised in the air. Basically, like they created a Soviet dust bowl and they had to pretty much abandon the whole project because they just developed too much land without any additional measures to prevent uh, deterioration of soil, to prevent erosion. So just like out of West, when they hoped that rain will fold the plow, Soviet Union hoped that rain will fold the socialism and it didn't and it was a giant disaster, huge amount of money wasted, huge damage to environment and in the end they had to scale down drastically on uh, planting and harvesting wheat in those areas. Tselina. And after that huge debacle still a lot of people got medals for developing Tselina badges, all the stuff that was like a big deal. Leonid Brezhnev even wrote a book called Celina about his experience because he was sent over there uh, to work and help with developing new lands. In the end, everything went to buying wheat from America and Canada. And some of you may be wondering what was going on with Soviet agriculture? Why they couldn't supply enough grain to feed their own people? And I believe one of the reasons, you know, collective farms were not effective and a lot of young people were moving from the villages into the cities. Khrushchev allowed that. It's like my parents, baby boomers, my father was born in 1946, my mother in 1948. They left their villages and came to Kiev. So you had shortage of labor, but at the same time, Soviet government wasn't in a hurry to provide more equipment to replace manual labor with more combines, with more tractors and other equipment to, you know, replace manual labor to compensate the loss of workers. So it's just output was keep on going down and down because it was less and less people available to work in the collective farms. And those people were getting older, so they couldn't work as hard as they used to. So everything was adding up. And you need to remember, collective farm workers weren't really paid well or at all. Because the whole concept was, you know, collective farms produced, you know, one ton, we'll say, it, of grain. 
and you have a buyer, government, and buyer, government wants the lowest price possible because they sell that grain cheap to make cheap bread, so they will give enough money to collective farm just to get by, so we hardly any money left to pay the workers, and of course, workers that are not getting paid well, they don't want to work hard, and they'll be stealing, and all that good stuff. I already had a video about it, about workbook of the collective farm worker. I'll provide link in the comment section. And compare that to modern days. So after the Soviet Union collapsed, Russia eventually became number one, not importer, but exporter of grains in the world. Ukraine number five. So collective farms disappeared. And without collective farms, without five-year plans, suddenly Russia became a superpower of producing wheat and then Ukraine is right behind you know Ukraine of course weighs a smaller size of Texas so this is how productivity changed from socialist collective farms when people didn't want to work versus greedy farmers that now are trying to squeeze every gram of extra grain to sell it and make profit. So yeah, this is basically going back to the original question, did Soviet people make their own bread? Some of course did, but most people just didn't bother because bread at the stores was so cheap, like really dirt cheap. So yeah, I hardly remember ever my mom making any bread except the uh, Easter sweet breads, Pascha. Okay, my friends, it's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching Ushanka's show and my special thanks to my supporter and my channel members here on YouTube and my Patreons, I greatly appreciate your financial support. And please don't forget to like this video, maybe comment, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.